inside the Siegel Center in Richmond, Virginia, on the campus of VCU. The Capital City Classic, the 82nd all-time meeting between the Richmond Spiders and the Rams of VCU. Only six miles apart, but a lot of animosity jammed inside those six miles. The standings in the A-10, Davidson atop the league. They beat Fordham yesterday. They sit at 9-2. and two. VCU can move back into a tie for first with a win tonight. Richmond tries to win its third game overall and third in the series against VCU. Hi again, everybody, alongside my partner, Tim Welsh, I play Matt Vick. Without a doubt, this is the best rivalry in the A-10 and maybe one of the best in the country. It's great, Clay. There's hatred in the air. <laughs> Providence, URI, UCLA, USC, Xavier, Cincinnati. Uh, I love it. A little blood and guts. But listen, these are two good basketball teams. Richmond's had an up and down year because they're so young, playing better as of late. But VCU has to keep trending forward and keep getting wins. Right now, they'd probably be in the tournament, but it's a must win tonight. They can't lose this game if they want to play in March. Yeah, they missed the NCAA tournament last year for the first time in eight seasons. They're in the conversation this year without a doubt. In fact, Joe Lenardi has them as one of his last four buys. Well, listen, they've had a good season with the quality win at Texas. They're really hanging their hat on that. The Atlantic 10 is young and youthful, so they have to take control of the Atlantic 10 down the stretch. Davidson's also a very good team that could make the tournament. But right now, tonight, they have to take care of business on their home court against this young Richmond team. Both teams playing well coming in. DC has won four in a row. Richmond has won three of the last four. Tony Henderson, Tony Chiazza, Justin Porterfield, the officiating crew. The Spiders on the road control the opening tip. What do you expect early? Well, patience by the Spiders. They've got to space the floor and do that. They've got to make threes. They're not going to get that many open ones because VCU is one of the best in the country at defending the three. Richmond will take a lot of them and make a lot of them if they can get open. Isaac Van will take the first field goal attempt for VCU, in and out. And we're starting five for the Spiders. They are young. They start three sophomores, a couple of freshmen. But Golden and Gilliard, two of the top four scorers in the A-10. They are the good young sophomores. They're going to play a lot of minutes. They're going to be handling the ball. And Chris Mooney said we have to make that first or second pass against this defense to get comfortable and try to get into a rhythm. Jacob Gilliard. Golden can't stick it back for him. And VCU, two sophomores, three juniors in their starting five. Their story is their deep bench. Nine guys averaging at least 14 minutes. Mike Rhodes calls it his army. We could see as many as 12 guys tonight. Well, the army on both sides. A little tight early in this rivalry game. Wide open shots on both sides and no one yet to connect. Here's the big man, Grant Golden, going to work. Back and down, Santos Silva, and he's got the first points of the game. Well, he's got some size over Santos, and surprised VCU sent, didn't send the double. Expect them, though, to mix up their mat, their coverages, not only in ball screen, but defending Golden on the box. Tipped away, Evans recovers for the Rams. Now Santos Silva draws contact underneath, and that's their first foul. It goes against Nathan Kao. Chris Mooney in his 14th year as the Spiders head coach. 46 years old, the winningest coach in Richmond history. He's going through a rough patch right now. Well, a rough patch because some guys they counted on coming into the season weren't here. Quan Ford, the grad transfer to Louisville. Nick Sherrod out for the year with the ACL really put set them back. And they had to dismiss DeMonte, DeMonte earlier in the year. Buckington, and the thing about him and his program is that they've got good young players and they're getting a lot of experience and they're playing better as of late. So you see the promise. We've got some guys sitting out this year. There were Blake Francis, the transfer from Wagner. So the, the future is bright and Richmond will be back in the years to come. Santos Silva gets one of two at the line. That foul actually and Wojcik his first. A lot of tricks by VCU. They're going to get up and pressure the basketball, overplay, and then help when the ball comes into the lane. It's not exactly havoc like it was in the days of Shaka Smart, but certainly they force a lot of live ball turnovers. That's what Richmond has to avoid, but there's one right there. 
Mike Rhodes in his second year, also 46 years old. He worked under Shaka Smart before coaching at Rice for three years. Well, they're going to press you. They're going to attack you on both ends. But the thing that they're improved with this year is their defense. And that was a big emphasis in the offseason just to become a much better defensive team. Good sign for the Rams. Darianti Jenkins, who's been struggling from three this year, all for his last eight outside the arc before that May. Now, that was a pretty easy look. A little ball, simple ball reversal. And Richmond, you know, play that matchup zone, some matchup, some two, three, some man. But when they're in the zone, they've got to put a little, a little bit more pressure on the perimeter. Golden kicks it out. Gilliard, his three doesn't go. And Jensen's will clear. A little simple dig in from ball side. No recovery on them. They gave up the weak side, or excuse me, ball side open shot, but they took it away. Golden on the box. In and out for Santos Silva. Isaac Van just left Gilliard and went and doubled on the box, but Richmond's going to knock down a few of these shots. They've had some open looks already from the perimeter. Golden floats it up and kisses it off the glass. Ooh, with the fluidity of a two guard, a little footwork for the big fella off the window. The 6'10 sophomore, their leading scorer at 18 points per game. He's got four. He's been in double figures in all but one game this year. And now Marcus Evans drives in and scores with the left hand. Good ball movement by BCU. Good spacing allowed that blow by right on the wing with no resistance and no help down the lane. Evans followed Mike Rhodes to VCU from Rice. Two-time first-team all-conference USA at Rice. So that was a big get for Rhodes when he made the move. KO drives. That's an offensive foul on Richmond. Energetic start as we would expect here in Richmond. The Spiders and Rams renewing their rivalry. Couple of great meetings last year between these two programs and Richmond swept the season series, including a stunner. They were down a dozen, came back to beat the Rams on their home floor. Crowd went nuts. It's going to be tough for the Spiders to get a road win here tonight. This place is packed again, and VCU 11 and 1 at home this year inside the Siegel Center. Sold out every game for the last eight years. This is the 130th consecutive sellout. One of the top fan bases in the country, and along with it, just an all-American band here playing. There's no, there's no uh, empty air time during timeouts. There's no advertising for the local food chains. <laughs> the band just blares that energy into this building. VCU with the early lead. And point guard Marcus Evans trying to set up Jenkins on the lob, and that doesn't connect. Special out of the timeout. And so far, VCU has not up and got into Richmond in the full court. They're just picking them up half court. Richmond's kind of getting get into a pretty good rhythm. If they, they relax and make a couple shots, they'll be able to hang in this game because they have some good offensive players, including that guy right there. The big man from three. He's 26% from outside the arc this year, but he shows the touch. And Richmond takes the lead. Physicality, some good footwork on the drives, and a touch from the perimeter. Golden is three for four from the field. The rest of the team, 0 for three. A little bit of a force there by BCU. Not patient against that zone. Wojcik on the runner. Jake Wojcik, freshman three-point shooter, but he scores in the paint. Well, most of his shots do come from the three, but that time, good cut away from the basketball. This man turned his head and found that open gap. Mobley trying to hand off to Santos Silva. And the 6'7 sophomore from Massachusetts scores his first field goal. Boy, has he ever improved. He lost the weight, and now he has shown the ability to score and move on defense as well. And now the Rams want to run. Evans attacks. 
26 seconds on the shot clock. VCU will keep it. And here comes the wave. VCU will go to the bench early and often. They like to play 12 guys, as you talked about, Clay. But Richmond, Chris Moody told us earlier, he wants to get some subs in there early just to get a feel for the game. And everybody involved in case he has to go to his bench late in the second half. Corey Douglas will go to the foul line to shoot two. An athletic post player from Louisville. And this is something that VCU does a really good job of, Tim, is getting to the foul line. Well, Corey Douglas can do that, and he's a guy that Mike Rhodes really likes, thinks he's going to become a big-time player in this conference over his career, and you saw right away, they went right into him. He did a great job of carving out that space right in front of the rim. VC with a chance to win the A-10, despite being picked seventh in the league. Trying to get back into a first place tie with Davidson. There's a foul out high on Jenkins. That's his first. That's what Richmond will do with their offense. They space the floor. They bring everybody out. They try to get you to turn your head. They'll go back door. They'll take the threes on ball reversal, or they have some good space to drive into the gaps because of their spacing on the perimeter. Richmond, four of eight to start. They shot 62% on Saturday. And a blowout of George Washington at home. 89-63, the final in that one. Got to hurry, two to shoot. Johnson, an extra pass. Rojic lost track. Shot clock violation. Uh, Gray drove the middle of the floor, and BCU did a good job of closing the gap, and Mike Rhodes really emphasized help the helper, and they did that. They rotated to Grace, and then they closed the door, made him throw the ball back out to the perimeter, and Richmond wasn't aware of the clock. Fourth turnover for Richmond. You see the defense for VCU, one of the better units in the country. Richmond's going to stay in that zone. You know, they, they understand that VCU only shoots 29% from the three. They're closing off the inside, making them take jumpers. Gilliard still without a point for the Spiders. Here's Evans. Good pass. Got it. Now we're going to wave it off. Offensive foul against Marcus Evans. That's his first personal. Julius Johnson has that big body for a guard, and that time he did a great job. He saw off the bounce. Here comes Evans, and just does a nice job of selling it. Taking that one right in the chest. Richmond able to break the press. Andre Gustafsson, the freshman from Finland, running the point, and that pass is kicked by Crowfield. So far, Richmond's done a good job against the pressure. ECU's starting to press a little bit more in the last few minutes, and that time, Gustafsson took the ball right up the sideline on quick, reball, quick ball reversal, and that's what they have to do. They have to make quick decisions against the press. You can't hesitate. They have to try to beat it with the pass, and then the quick dribble up the floor. Here's Jacob Gilliard, the reigning A-10 player of the week, finds Golden again. That time off the mark. I think Richmond's done a good job, though, Tim, weathering the early storm, without a doubt. They have. They've changed defenses. Now they're in the man. They're going to leave them open on the perimeter. Gilliard takes it all the way to the hole and draws the contact. And when we come back, we're going to get Tim's take. Is there a Cinderella among the mid-majors this year? He'll give us his answer next. Rams, the winningest program in the A-10 since joining the league six years ago, taking on their rivals across town. Richmond tied at nine here in the early going alongside Tim Welsh. I play Matvick time for Tim's take. When you think mid-majors, you certainly think VCU. Loyola Chicago was the Cinderella story last year. Could it be VCU or someone else this year? Absolutely. You know, being a former mid-major coach myself, I've got to wave the flag for the mid-majors. And listen, in this league, I think it's going to be a two-bit league at least. I think VCU is going to get in. I think David
Davidson will win enough moving forward down the stretch to get there. Listen, there's a group, and everybody knows Nevada. They're saying they're going to be shocked if they're, they're there. They've been in the top 15 all year. Buffalo has done a great job. Wolford is there. Lipscomb with a win over TCU. San Francisco with Kyle Smith out west has done an unbelievable job to get in the mix. And Furman with a win over Villanova. They're in the mix as well. So some, the problem with some the Furman and maybe a San Francisco, they may have to win their tournament to get in. But if they keep winning, I think there's some softness at the top with the Pac-12 not really having a lot of depth. The Big East doesn't have as much depth as they have had in the past. They, they may get four or five in. So there's going to be some room for the mid-majors. The A-10 as a whole is a little bit down, but it's young. I think I don't think the talent is down. I think it's just a younger league this year. And everyone that I've talked to, and as you break the league down, you see the young talent. So in the next few years, they're going to be back to five or six bids again. That's for sure. Jacob Gilliard over 19 points per game in A-10 play. That's first in the league. He's got his first point of the night at the line for Richmond. They have the lead 10 to 9. Tough year for Richmond, under 500. But they've won three of their last four. This would be a big win against their rival. Douglas inside with the hook shot, his first field goal. He's got three. Good job by BC. Just patience, attacking that pressure, attacking that zone, spacing the court, then driving and making the extra pass after you draw the defender on the help. gaps in this zone because of the fact that Richmond is going to make you shoot from the outside. So you're going to have to find your way and dribble into the gaps and try to make a pass before the defense shifts on the weak side. Nathan Kale and another live ball turnover for Richmond. That's their fifth giveaway here in the first half. It's live ball, but they did a good job getting back and not allowing an easy one. Sims for three. Kept alive by VCU. That's Richmond's weakness. They get out-rebounded by uh, five per game. Yeah, one of the worst rebounding teams in the country. Gilliard now in transition. The extra pass. Gustafson can't finish in close. It was partially blocked. Now there's the wave, the army, the energy off the bench. Sims misses the close-in shot. Kept alive, and now Williams will get to the line for the Rams. Nothing easy on both ends. And that was a tremendous block down, down the other end by Williams, just coming from the backside. Relentless pursuit, not giving up on the play. Looks like Richmond has the numbers. They do have the numbers. They make the extra pass. And look, here comes the big long arms of Williams over the top. Well, Saturday, three of the top five teams in the nation are on ESPN at 6. Zion, RJ, and number two Duke, hosting NC State. At 8 o'clock, it's off to Rupp for our Sonic Blockbusters. Number one, Tennessee, with their school record 18-game win streak, takes on number five, Kentucky. All streaming live on the ESPN app. A little angry, Rupp, after yeah. what happened last night at the end of that game against LSU, the controversial goaltending call that gave LSU the W. Tennessee and Kentucky going to meet a couple of times here in the last few weeks of the regular season. That will likely decide the SEC regular season title. There's a foul against Williams inside. I'll tell you right, play. early in a game, you can tell the team has got a little poise, a little pizzazz. And I think Richmond, they're young players for the first time playing in this rivalry game, so to speak, on the road where they had to step up. These guys were here a year ago, but now they've had to... Now they're big time players. Gilliard and Golden really have to be the major players for Richmond. They're showing a lot of poise out there. They, they look confident on the offensive end. Their defense has been solid as well. Nathan Kao, the sophomore for Montreal, one of the most improved players in the A-10, shooting 62% from the field. He gets one of two at the line. A role player a year ago, he's had to step up because of the injuries and the transfers and some of the problems that they've had as far as defections. Kale really has stepped up his game this season. Go, 
P.J. Bird skip pass over to Sims. He'll drive the baseline and finish. That's a pretty play by Mikael Sims. Oh, the control, the floating, the elevation, and the finish. He's from the 804 area code. He understands this rivalry. And Tim, you talked about what Richmond is missing. They've had injuries, defections, transfers. Guy kicked off the team. It's it's been a tough year for Coach Mooney. Yeah, Buckingham and, and four really were counted on this year. And then Sherrod was having a good season to start out. And it's just very difficult to overcome that throughout the course of the season. But they're, they're improving. And that really shows hope moving forward. That it, it, you know, when you talk to Chris, it's like how you finish the season. Obviously, they had some rough losses in the early part of the year, but these guys are too young to step up and win games early in the season. But now they're figuring it out, and that really bodes well for the future. Mooney's not going to leave Grant Golden on the bench very long. He's back in, the 6'10 sophomore from Winchester, Virginia. Seven points here in the first half to lead Richmond. They've gone without a field goal in over five minutes. You see, you're looking to add to their lead. It's three. Williams with the shot, fake drive and flush. Vince Williams, the freshman out of Toledo, with a thunderous jam. Well, he keeps wanting to go on to the baseline with his left. Richmond has to just cut it off. They have to make him shoot the ball from the perimeter. They closed out hard like he was a three-point shooter. He wants to do that. He wants to roll it and run it hard to the rim. Well, the elevation, the explosion, and you see Richmond here on the closeout. There's no reason to close out on Williams like that because he, he wants to do that. Punch it home. Earlier in the game, play, Richmond was doing a good job just playing that soft zone, making VCU shoot from the outside. Now they're playing a little bit too tight, and they're getting beat off the bounce. Mobley picks up the loose ball and scores. And this is what Richmond was worried about. The lead is swelled to seven. BCU known for its defense. They've held 11 opponents under 60 points this year, including Temple, Texas, and Virginia, and they're giving Richmond trouble here so far. Not a lot of tricks, just attack the basketball, hands high, good athletes, help the helper, give up your body, and keep that wave of pressure coming from 1 through 12. Wear you out on the D, that's the end. Richmond already has six turnovers, and on top of that, they haven't had a field goal since the 14-39 mark. And they're facing some VCU full court pressure now. The freshman P.J. Bird step for step with Wojcik. Johnson driving on the baseline. And Grant Golden has it poked away and now he's holding his hand. Uh, Richmond's got to make quick decisions with the ball. When you catch it, you can't just hold it because they will get up and attack. And with every second that you hold it, the defense will swarm and smell blood. Golden ranks second in the A-10 in scoring, and he's ninth in rebounding. He was a big-time factor in the early minutes for the Spiders, but VCU in the last several minutes has done a better job containing him. That's going to be an offensive foul on Richmond. It was Johnson going up for the tap out, and he committed the foul. In the first three, four minutes of this game, Richmond was getting some open looks. They were running their offense. They were getting into a rhythm, and that has gone away because VCU has amped up the pressure. They're up and in to Richmond's shirts. Well, now Grant Golden appeared to injure his left hand, and now he's getting his fingers taped up over on the Richmond bench.
He averages 18. He's got seven here so far. He's a good-looking player, but he needs some help. There's no doubt about it. He, he and Gilliard can go get some buckets, but you can see VCU. They are swarming the basketball when both Gilliard and Golden get it. So they're going to have to have some other guys make plays. I think Kale is the obvious next choice for them. Johnson's a guy that plays with a lot of energy. He's going to have to try to just force his way into the lane and try to drive and kick and find somebody open. Isaac Van gets a couple of free throws. ECU already in the bonus. A lot of time left here in the first half. Here comes the pressure. Richmond just trying to get it over the line without any problems. Now they're resetting, but every pass has been challenged. And another pass challenged, and the steal for Jenkins. He'll slam it down with a little style. Seven of the last eight field goals for VCU have come inside the paint, including a couple of dunks. Well, this is their strategy, their game plan. Death by a thousand paper cuts, meaning just keep coming at you, try to wear you out, get you to float the ball, get you to play a little soft, back yourself up, don't beat the ball, don't throw hard passes, don't cut hard, and they'll do that. Eat you up. Another turnover, Santos Silva has his pass intercepted. Now Gilliard misses the three, and boy, Richmond needed that. And they don't get it. Evans comes to the rescue. He has his pocket pick. Now Gilliard ahead of everybody. Shows some patience and scores. Oh, good job by Gilliard. Understanding that Van was flying in from the backside. He took his time, got him up in the air, and he's got to settle down in the half court. They're just not cutting hard. They're letting the defense overwhelm them. Lead is nine for VCU. Three more for Van. Van did a great job. He just presented himself, took his time, shot ready, and locked and loaded. Isaac Van coming off 14 points, nine rebounds. He's a guy who can get real hot. He scored 30 against St. John's in November. Golden working against Santos Silva. He'll dump a pass off inside for K.O. K.O. can't get the shot to go, but he'll get a trip to the strike. This is, this is what VCU does. Though. They'll space the court. They'll put shooters in each corner, and Van is one of their better shooters when he just has his feet set and a little smack talking in the inner city. So Nathan Kale at the line, the sophomore from Canada. Speaks three languages to him. English, French, and take a guess at the last one. Spanish? No. <laughs> Creole. I'm sorry, I don't know that. I should have a Creole. better prep work. <laughs> Working with you, you get thrown to throw these curveballs at me once in a while. <laughs> I don't know one word in Creole. I would have guessed French since I grew up about 75 miles from Montreal. But That's right. I almost spoke you're French myself. You're yeah. practically Canadian. Exactly. Well, they've got some good players in Canada, as we've seen throughout the year. All over the America, there's some great Canadians. VCO's made five straight field goals, making six in a row. And there is Marcus Evans getting in the act from three. Chris Moon's got to say, wait a minute, this team doesn't shoot threes well. Now they're starting to lock in and shoot threes on top of playing great defense. Santos Silva spits that one back. Man, I'll tell you what, you talked about it earlier. He is so improved. He's so improved. He absolutely could not do this a year ago. He couldn't elevate over the top and present some resistance. One of the biggest wins this year, probably the biggest for VCU, that win at Texas. Santos Silva scored a double-double in Austin back in December. Johnson for three. Jenkins to Gilmore. And Michael Gilmore, the nephew of the Hall of Famer artist, scores timeout. 
as the lead is now 15. Back in 30 seconds. VCU with its biggest lead of the night so far. It's now 30 to 15 with a little over five to go in the half. Well, this is a team that knows how to run a fast break, and this is fast break basketball at its best. You see the trailer coming down the floor, and they wait and wait and wait for the rim run for Gilmore. Perfect delivery over the top and great footwork to finish. And the suffocating defense making everything hard on Richmond. And we talked about it before, Tim. It's such a young Spiders team. Doesn't take much to rattle freshmen at sophomore. Well, they're young. They don't have a lot of depth or experience. And they're playing better as of late in this league. But this is one of the elite teams in this league and an NCAA tournament team playing in an unbelievably hard environment. Mike Rhodes, year number two at VCU, trying to get this team back to the NCAA tournament where this program feels it belongs annually. Another turnover, that's nine now for Richmond. And it'll stay on this end. Well, Sims hesitated just a little bit and allowed Richmond to get back on defense. He had the man, open man over the top, but... Again, DCU can beat you in a lot of different ways. Marcus Evans. Who has overcome surgeries to both Achilles tendons in the last year, running the point. Feeds Gilmore. Good shot fake. Now Jenkins had it stripped. Gilmore keeps it alive. Mobley. And last touch by Sims. It'll belong to Richmond. A better job on that possession by Richmond. Closing out on the top, but denying that penetration off the bounce. We talked about the three-point offense, Tim, for VCU not being great this year. In fact, near the bottom in the NCAA. But the three-point defense, absolutely terrific. In fact, best in the nation right now holding Richmond to one of seven from three. This is where they're scoring their points, though. Golden again inside. Well, they got to keep going down to the well, but the problem is, is that their perimeter players have had really no room to roam on the outside, meaning they're... Their vision has been cut off by the long athletes and just cut, get up in them with their hands up and it's hard to pass the ball inside when you're being pressured on a perimeter. Sims. Yes! VCU now four of nine from three. Well, the thing is, not a per force. They're taken within the context of their offense. And Richmond's had to make some adjustments and VCU's countered on every adjustment. All VCU here at the Siegel Center in Richmond. Rams piling it on here on their arch rivals in the first half. Chris Mooney is trying to scrap together a plan here to get his Richmond Spiders back in this one down 33-17. With 321 to go in the first. All right, let's flash back to some great moments in Richmond history. College Park, Maryland, almost 28 years ago, the NCAA tournament. First round game. The 15 seed Spiders with the upset of the two seed. First time that had ever happened in tournament history. 73 69 over Syracuse. Jim Behind's team goes down with. His assistant coach, a young Tim Welsh, oh, on yeah, his well, bench at the time. Let's let's give Richmond all the credit. The great Dick Tarrant, who was yeah. a fantastic coach, and really got this program going in the right direction. And the thing about oh goodness, a little wow. more, a little more on the top floor back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking like I'm getting blamed for this. You there's were buying. No, there's no doubt I was blamed for that loss because that was the last time I ever sat on a Syracuse bench. And Jim said, see you later after that. You were buying a lot more shampoo. I was, quiet, I was quietly fired. <laughs> well, but listen, Richmond will be back to their glory days of 2011. There's no doubt about that. I, I think that, in my opinion, Chris Moody is one of the better coaches around. And, 
it's going, they're going through a little bit of a rough patch for the young team and some of the things that's happened over this year, some tough injuries and whatnot, but they'll be back. This man has not forgotten how to coach. He is excellent. He's an excellent basketball coach and a perfect fit. Isaac Van spins in the lane. He's having a pretty good first half. He's got seven points. Gustafson able to break the press for Richmond. A couple of threes now for the Spiders here in the half. They're two of eight. Another open look from three. Gilliard splashes that one home, and you know, the Spiders out of a timeout showing some life. Well, that's what they have to do, just take their time and try to just drive the ball into the gap, cut a little bit harder, and not let the pressure get to them. And when they are pressured, attack it. Attack it and be ready to make that pass when the help comes. Seventh VCU turnover. Spiders with a chance to pull back within single digits. Big man Golden with an extra pass to Ko. Nathan Ko scores. No, Chris Cooney's done a nice job of trying to keep this game within reach by using his timeout, settling his team down when this building is starting to erupt. And right now they're starting to settle down on the offensive end. It's an 8-2 run for the Spiders. Evans that in a hurry. Well, Chris is clapping over there and inside he's like, what is going on? This team shoots 29% from the three and they're just lighting it up tonight. They rank 340th in the country in three-point shooting. But they're hot tonight. And that's an offensive foul on Grant Golden. His second foul. NBA All-Star Weekend begins Friday in Charlotte, and the celebrity game on ESPN tips off the festivities. Hall of Famer Don Staley coaches the home team, all with Charlotte roots, including our own Jay Williams. And the four-point line is back. 7 o'clock from Bojangles Arena on ESPN and the ESPN app. Can't That'll wait to see that. And the great Kemba Walker representing Charlotte, former UConn yeah. star and star of Rice High School. We saw him when he was in about seventh grade dribbling in circles around everybody when he was about five foot five. And right now, BCU's not dribbling around in circles. They're just launching from three and hitting everything. VCU has not hit a mid-range jumper. It's all either been in the paint or from three. And uh, Evans a little bit too aggressive trying to force that turnover. Call for the foul. Well, we've talked about it ad nauseum. 29% for the floor. Richmond's got a game plan defensively. We're going to play soft. We're going to go underneath the screens and we're going to give him the three. And it's backfired because VCU just is locked and loaded with confidence all night long. Second foul on Evans. K.O. back to the line. Averages 13 points per game. He's got five. Sixteen-point lead for the Rams. That equals their biggest lead of the night so far. 25 seconds to go in the half. Van off the heel. And again, the rebounding woes for Richmond continue to rear their ugly head. Now that really had, that was a bad bounce, but you got to go find a way to get that loose ball and attack it and go down to the other end. VCU with a timeout with 12.5 to go in the half. There you see Chris Mooney. Signs of disgust on his face. We said that the Spiders swept VCU last year, but both of these teams are different here in 2019. Well, Saturday, we've got three of the top five teams in the country on ESPN, including Duke. Zion and company will take on NC State at six. And then later on at 8 o'clock, it's the Sonic Blockbuster from Rupp Arena. The Volunteers and the Wildcats. Tennessee trying to keep that streak going. They've won 18 straight. That's a school record. Uh, obviously, Rick Barnes has done an unbelievable job. He would be my national coach of the year right now, hands down, easily. 
But I'm still amazed at what I saw last night down in Louisville. I've seen comebacks like that before, but not usually on the road against a quality opponent. Last shot of the half, perhaps. Evans is fouled from three. Uh, they're going to call an offensive foul on Marcus Evans, the second offensive foul of the half against him. Well, this is an emphasis this season. I've, you've seen it more as of late. If the offensive player sticks his leg out and kicks the defensive player and then falls down, it's going to be a foul on the offensive player. Watch the leg kick here. That's a good call. Yep. And that's the third personal on Marcus Evans, so that will be a factor likely going into the second half. But VCU dominating the first half, 41 to 25, 6 of 12 from outside of the arc. After the break, it's back to the studio for Chris Conner, Dale and Cup, and Sean Farnham in our college basketball halftime report. The Rams of VCU rolling right over their Crosstown A-10 rivals. The Richmond Spiders in that first half, 41-25 at the break. Never miss your game or your team. Download the ESPN app and subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. It's your home on the go for thousands of college basketball games, including many games from the A-10. International soccer, UFC, and exclusive original programming, including the award-winning 30 for 30. You can sign up now and download the ESPN app or visit ESPNplus.com. And the Richmond Spiders don't play again until next Wednesday. They'll be at home against Fordham. That's a game on ESPN Plus, including their last six games. Five will be on ESPN Plus. But the Spiders in this one are down 41-25. Second half action from Richmond coming up right after this timeout. One half of the Capital City Classic in the books and VCU shooting the lights on the first half. 63% from the field alongside Tim Welsh, I play Manfred. And this young Richmond team, Timmy, struggling with the atmosphere in the first half, also struggling with the depth of the Rams. Uh, just they wear you down, there's no doubt about it. You know, Richmond only turns the ball over about 10 times per game. They already have 10, so that tells the story right there. But the other side is that they see we shoot the ball 50% from the three. We're getting good open looks. They're being patient, and again, their defense, their tenacity, and this building, so far, too much for the Spiders. Van kicks it out to Mobley. And the three-point shooting continues to be a strong spot tonight for VCU. Now seven for 13 from outside the arc. Well, when you're a poor three-point shooting team, which VCU really is, 29% on the season, sometimes it's fool's gold, and the other coach will say, well, keep shooting it because they'll go back to their who they are. But VCU tonight certainly in rhythm and a lot of confidence from outside. Need to get Jacob Gilliard going. Here's the reigning A-10 player of the week rolling it in with his left hand. Yeah, and he's a good-looking player. Just doesn't have enough help out there. He's trying to do it on his own. That time found a little window to the rack. Sophomore from Kansas City. 20 or more points in three of the last four games. He's got eight now for Richmond. And the adjustments you expect here for Coach Mooney? Well, they got to keep putting pressure on the defense, try to get Gilliard going to the rim, and that time looked like he might have got fouled, but they called the walk. But down on this end of the floor, I don't know what you do if you're Richmond because you can't go out and pressure on the perimeter. BCU's too athletic, they're too good off the bounce to get into the rim. They've got to just kind of sit in the zone, play a softer man, and hope that BCU starts missing a little bit and they can rebound the ball and get some opportunities in transition. Evans for three. Santos Silva the putback. And out of bounds to Richmond. See, that's what can't happen, though. You, you force them to take a shot from the outside. They miss, like the percentages say they will. And then you've got four blue shirts on the inside, and Silva comes up with the offensive rebound. Mm -hmm. 
is Gilliard breaking that press. Chris Mooney wants him to be a leader. He told us that. And if you listen to Gilliard in, in post-game press conferences, he sounds like a coach. He sounds like a leader. Well, he is. He's a keeper. There's no doubt about it. He's going to be a great player in this league. And so is that guy right there. And they'll build around those two. And those are two good building blocks for the future at, futures as sophomores. Grant Golden now double figures with 11. Again, he's been in double figures in every game but one this season. No doubt a guy to build around. Mobley, so strong on that hook shot. Wojcik, nice move to get open for three, and he nails it. Wojcik hasn't had much space. That time he created space off the bounce. Nice little step back for the freshman. His dad, Dave, the former coach at San Jose State. His uncle, Doug, the former Tulsa and College of Charleston head coach. And here comes Richmond off the VCU miss, a chance to continue to chip away. Gilliard is fouled. Well, this has been the problem for Richmond. The first couple passes of their offense and trying to get the ball inside for a little one-on-one -on -one coverage. And if you can, they can do that, get it inside, they're in good shape. But here, nice little pump fake. Coach Sun, fundamental, knocked it in. What a move by Kale on the turnaround. Well, the pressure of Richmond has more been in the half court. They haven't turned it over. Excuse me, Richmond has not turned it over against the press. They've turned it over in the half court. So far this half, they're more comfortable in the half court running their stuff. Evans got the floater to answer back for the Rams. That's where they're so hard to defend because they space the floor and they just take you off the bounce and they've got really good players that can make that mid-range shot. Richmond hasn't missed a shot yet here in the half. They're four for four, and now a foul drawn by Gustafson. Spiker's on a 9-2 run, Tim. Well, this is the whistle that Chris Booney hope, was hoping to get. I put a little pressure on the defense. Get some hand checks here and there. Problem is, though, VCU will just bring in the next wave. Yeah. Legitimately 12 deep. Well, that's a good point. I mean, Jenkins just picked up his third foul. Evans is playing with three. A lot of teams, that would be a problem personnel-wise. Not for VCU, they go so deep. Oh, good move off, off the bounce by Gilly. Just short-armed a little bit at the rim. Matt Grace with his second foul. Oh, it's a little bit of a mismatch inside. VCU will see that. They're going to go right into Santa Silva. And Matt Grace not ready to play the big fella down low. He can't get, get around, sit on his backside. He's got to try to wrap around a little bit down low. Silva rolling to the basket. They kick it back out to Mobley instead. His jumper doesn't go, and there's a foul on the floor underneath. That goes against the Spiders with 15.48 to play. Richmond shooting it well here in the second half, but they're still down a dozen. The Capital City Classic, Richmond and VCU, just six miles apart. It's got a little public school versus private school animosity involved. It goes back all the way to 1976. Richmond winning both games last year. And good atmosphere here inside the Siegel Center tonight. One of the best rivalries in the country. We talked about it at the top. So. Lacks a little of the spice, though, that I would like. I, the coaches like and respect each other a little bit too much for yeah, a hated, right. hated rivalry. But you got two great guys and respected coaches that uh, have known each other a long time and respect the jobs both of them have done over the years. similarities between the two head coaches. Here's Wojcik for three. Johnson able to keep it alive for Richmond. Richmond running their stuff. They're feeling like they're in a pretty good rhythm. Getting it moved from side to side. Get the big guy involved inside, Golden. 
KO got the pass from Gilliard, and it's an 11 to 2 run for the Spiders. Ah, but the slam on the other end by Van. That's where they weigh out. You know, they, they do a good job on the offensive end, Richmond, and then they just don't sprint back and identify, and that depth keeps coming at you that time after the made basket. Logic with 10 to shoot. Grant Golden. And a VCU foul. Both head coaches are 46 years old. They've known each other a long time. They go back to their days playing high school ball in Pennsylvania. Well, real good teachers of the game. You can see their players like playing for them. And it's great that they play twice now in the same conference. Used to be in the same conference way back when in the old Colonial. A lot of respect between these two men, like you said. Back to our cut for Wojcik. And how about the big man with the pass? Nice delivery, but nice recognition by Wojcik. His man turned his head. He just made a simple backdoor cut. He had the space to complete the play. Sims oh. fouled by Gilliard. And both guys take a tumble. Looks like they're both going to be okay. This is what happens when you make six out of 12 threes in the first half. You just panic on the closeout. He just leaves his feet. Nice show. Head fake there. And here it is. Looks like he's okay. He's up and walking around. Sims is going to get three foul shots. Not sure why. It looked like he was in in the motion of shooting. It looked like he just was had the fake had got into a shot motion yet looked like he fouled him on the ground and coach mooney's getting the explanation as sims toes the line a junior from right here in richmond he understands this rivalry as good as anybody well as we all know we've reviewed what's reviewable the last few days with all the nonsense that's gone on around the country including that play last night at the end of the Kentucky LSU game, which is not reviewable, but that play is not reviewable either. That's a good point. And I think that's, you know, what a lot of people at home watching think, well, why don't they just go to the monitor and make sure, but some things are not reviewable. Right. And we saw in the end of the Duke Louisville game last night that the block charge, the restricted arc call is reviewable, and it was changed late in the game in Duke's favor, which was a huge play, giving them two more free throws in their comeback. The suffocating defense just never lets up for VCU. K.O. found his way to the rim, can't finish. Gilliard got the miss and draws the foul. Well, it wasn't pretty, but Richmond somehow got it up against the pressure of Grant Golden. He's kind of bullied his way over half court, but Richmond's doing a pretty good job this half. You see Gilliard, he wants the act of shooting foul. Let's get his way. Golden. Another oh. hook shot, and that's what we saw from him early in the game. That's a deep hook, though. That was really good defense on that on that possession by Corey Douglas. He just shot it right over the top. Sims misses badly from three, out of bounds to Richmond. So this is what you see what's happening. Sometimes a team gets comfortable in the first half shooting threes. It's not a three-point shooting team. And they start keep jacking them. And look at this. I mean, this is great defense. Might even add a foul there, but just a soft touch. Golden with 13 points, five rebounds. Belongs to VCU. That's what VCU does best. They kind of force the issue. They make you go back door, but they rotate very quickly. The help, the helper. Well, Richmond has a... 
better case here in the early part of the second half for uh, playing with VCU. It really got away from them at times in the first half, but they're playing better here so far in the second half. And now Golden is upset. He just picked up another personal. I think they call that on. No, you're right. It is on Douglas. Douglas. He just kind of backed his way in. He used his backside just to drive Golden off the spot. He created and initiated the contact. Yeah. Now Richmond gives it right back. And that's what you have to be aware of. The quickness of Richmond on the back tap by Bird. Douglas. Foul that time for sure by Golden. A great pursuit of the basketball and that pressure. With that pressure in the full court, it turns into half court pressure, but you cannot relax. You have to be aware and try to give the ball up before the back pursuit comes and attacks. So now Golden with three fouls. And Douglas will go to the foul line. Douglas, not a good foul shooter, just 44%. Don't forget. Big day on Saturday on ESPN. And number two, Duke hosting North Carolina State. And then number one, Tennessee. And number five, Kentucky. Volunteers with that 18 game winning streak down the line. That'll be a good one in the SEC. It's all streaming live on the ESPN app as well. Uh, just a dream season for Rick Barnes, and Grant Williams, and Admiral Schofield and company. And they are hard out. It'll be a fun night in Lexington. VCU trying to trap Caressi here along the sideline. And watching VCU, they just kind of ease into their defense and then they just amp up the pressure. Now that Richmond was comfortable and now they're uncomfortable because the attack and the wave and the second wave has really pushed up the pressure on the Spiders. Gilliard with eight points tonight, just one basket here in the second half. Williams, the lefty, left open for three, and he got it. Chris Mooney says, excuse me, that's the guy that was two for 12 on the season coming into this game tonight from the three-point line. Looked pretty comfortable there. And the lead goes back to 15. Stolen away by Williams. Numbers for the Rams. Wojcik doing a good job getting back. KO fouled by Douglas. But VCU has complete control here at the midway point of the second half. A 15 point lead for the Rams. Barnes team just beat South Carolina, so Tennessee's winning streak is now at 19 games, Tim. Going into that game with Kentucky. Don't see many weaknesses. Obviously, it's going to be a big task to, to go into rough, but they've got a veteran team that's not going to be afraid of that environment. And the thing about Kentucky is they'll be a little nasty. They'll be a little, have a little edge to them after last night's loss to LSU at home seen some nastiness. We've seen some edge from these Rams tonight. That's for sure. That's a 15-point game, but I've been impressed with Richmond's just bravado, their ability to take some punches, get off the deck, and try to keep punching back. And Obviously, they don't have as many weapons or bodies as VCU, but they keep battling. And they're not afraid. And they've really had to withstand just an unbelievable shooting night from the perimeter from VCU, which is not normal, but Richmond is hanging around with just some good feisty play. Santos Silva's had a hard time you know, getting established inside tonight. It hasn't mattered because, like you said, Timmy, the perimeter has been so good for the Rams. Caressi picks up that foul, and that's his second. Bird gets it in, has it poked away. Gustafson can't finish. Johnson to get it back out. Gilliard for three. His second three tonight, and Gilliard's in double figures for the Spikes. Julius Johnson's done the dirty work tonight for Richard. Just the loose balls of toughness on defense, and he made that play by keeping the, the set and the possession alive. Shot clock under 10, Crowfield. 
Sims with five to shoot. Drives. And he got it. And that kind of night. For the VCU Rams, Mikel Sims also in double figures tonight. And that's their game. Just drive it to the hole. Change a little body movement in midair. And attack and then set up the press. Bird with the foul. Sims leading the way with 13 points. Evans with 10. Talked about the lack of a mid-range game in college basketball. VCU is a perfect testimony to that. It's all from inside or outside. Now that's kind of the way Richmond likes to play. They like to shoot the three or they put pounded inside to Golden, but VCU is a little bit more balanced to their game tonight from the outside and inside. But this is a fun league, the Atlantic 10. It's a young league. Davidson's going to be there at the end. Dayton is certainly a good team. George Mason, Duquesne. I think and if any of those teams won the A-10 tournament, you wouldn't be surprised. It's going to be up in the air again. They'll be back in Brooklyn this year, which is nice to see. And uh, I think the one constant in this league is terrific coaching from top to bottom. That's why I think this league will be back where it has been in the next few years. Santos Silva, nice adjustment going from his right hand to his left. Forty-five pounds lighter. He can make that move. Get right over the top. Quickness and great footwork by Santos Silva. VC with a win tonight will tie Davidson atop the league at nine and two. Shot clock at nine for Gillier. Look up over Sims. Misses from three. KO his rebound. Got his own miss. And he'll go to the line. Couldn't get the shot to go, but good hard work there by Nathan Kale out of Montreal. Wow. Just that second and third effort by Kale and fearlessness in there amongst three bodies just bodied up on him. And fouled him on the second attempt. Trying to shoot over the top. They got him with the body. Perkins, or excuse me, Jenkins is going to come back in for VCU. So will Marcus Evans. Evans tonight with 10 points, but he has not been to the free throw line tonight for VCU. A third of his points come from the charity strike. Well, they've laid off. Richmond had a good game plan coming in defensively. They played a soft zone, a soft man, and gone underneath ball screens, tried to take away the drives, but VCU's made him pay with great three point shooting. Simmons, the junior from Chesapeake, Virginia. The drive, throws it up, got it in one! So Evans will go to the line to try to complete the three-point play. Uh, his first trip. Sorry, Clay, you just mentioned it. That's his game. Try to drive it in with toughness. He's got his head up, and there's a little bit of the mid-range game, plus the foul. Third foul on Sal Caressi, the freshman. He's going to go to the bench for Richmond. Marcus Evans, we talked about it before, Tim. He's overcome a lot physically. And two torn Achilles tendons here in the last year. Now Mike Rhodes and Tony Henderson having a conversation. Well, Mike wants to know why he doesn't get equal opportunity here with the with the lengthy discussions and you know the officials. I don't know what what they're giving in a con getting in a conversation with Chris about, but make your point, and move on. The other, the other coach never likes to see extended one-on-one -on -one conversations between the other coach and the official because you don't know what's being said. You don't want him to get one up on you. So he wants a little bit of time as well. Nice defense is really problematic. 
Uh, There's no breathing room. Well, you've got to set hard screens, and you've got to cut hard. And right now, Richmond, you can see slowly but surely, they're starting to wear out a little bit because these, the pressure and the depth, and there's almost another turnover, just trying to get an inbounds on the sideline. Gilliard floats it up. Offensive foul on Jacob Gilliard. We saw Mike Rhodes emphasize it over and over and over today as he was going through Richmond's stuff. When Gilliard gets it in into the lane, help the helper rotate and take one in the chest. Seventh team foul for Richmond. VCU already with eight. Both teams at the line the rest of the way. 62-47 VCU. Trying to end a two-game winning streak in the series for the Richmond Spiders. Packed house here at the Siegel Center in Richmond. And the Rams with another turnover. It's their 12th. Good job by Richmond on that possession. He played a pretty good active zone. Had their hands up, got the deflection and the turnover. Caressi, the freshman drives, can't get it to go. Now Jenkins loping into the front court. Good shot fake by Evans. Dariante Jenkins, top returning scorer from last year. But with Marcus Evans here now, it's been less of a weight on his shoulders. Gilliard off the steal. Good handoff to KO. Gilliard, that's what he does. He's second in the nation in steals. 3.3 per game. Well, that's certainly not what Santos is supposed to be doing on the offensive end. Marcus Santos Silva, that time trying to put the ball on the deck on the outside. He got swiped by Gilliard. Ariante Jenkins with his second three and first of the half. That's the one guy you must make put the ball on the floor because he just locks and loads from the outside with a lot of confidence. VCU has made five straight baskets. Here they come off the steal looking for six. Jenkins the lob. Santos Silva with an athletic jam in the foul. Well, this building is about to erupt to a new level, and it's because of the defense, the ability to push it, attack, throw it over the top, and finish for the big fella with a foul. Oh, my. Been some great coaches here at VCU over the years, including Jeff Cable. Took him to the NCAA Tournament in 2004. Anthony Grant, a couple of national tournament appearances before taking the job at Alabama. Of course, Shaka Smart, he had a great run here. 2011, all the way to the Final Four. And Will Wade, who's now at LSU, he had two NCAA Tournament appearances in his time at VCU. And now Mike Rhodes, in just a couple of years, may have them on the cusp of getting back to the big dance. Well, certainly earned his stripes with Shaka and Randolph, co head coach of Randolph Macon down the road from here. And, and at Rice, did a great job there as well. And BCU has been one of the best at, as far as finding the next great coach. Santos Silva will take a seat next to Mike Rhodes. It's a 6-0 run now for VCU, and they've equaled their biggest lead. It's 19 points. It's hard to beat this team in this building moving forward throughout the rest of the season. This team's building confidence on both ends of the floor, and this fan base really has caught on to this group of players. K.O. is going to shoot a foul shot. It's the winningest program in the A-10 since joining the league seven years ago. And there is an expectation among this fan base, Tim. You know, got to get to the NCAA tournament. It's become expected, and last year was an aberration. 
That's why you take a job like this, though. You want those expectations because obviously there's been great coaches here, but the pro it's a program as well. There's, there's other things behind the program, you know, the commitment from the top of the school right down to everybody to understand the great building, to how to run game, game operations, to the, the way you travel. All of those things are at a high level here at VCU. We're shooting 59% tonight. Just an amazing scoring night for the Rams. Douglas in close, goes to the other side of the rim and scores. That's why Mike Rhodes' face lights up when you talk about Corey Douglas. He is going to be a big-time player here. Just a guy that knows how to score, position himself down low. Not a lot of wasted effort. The ability to finish in traffic. Evans. And it's going to be a foul on Golden. Golden thought he had position. But he just picked up his fourth. Good job by Grant Golden is to try to hang in there and take one. But Evans just too crafty with that move. Just kind of avoided the charge and got Golden to slide in to draw the foul. said it before about VCU, Tim, it's just the depth, the waves of replacements that they can bring at you, as Mike Rhodes calls it, it's his army. Nine guys have scored here tonight for the Rams, and 11 have played. And again, if you're going to build a program, that's the way to build it. You've got, got everybody's happy, everybody's ready to play every night. The minutes are balanced, the shots are balanced, and... You better play with high intensity with every pass or else you're going to come out and be replaced by somebody who's going to do that. Wow. Jenkins with the alley of Devan. First in wins. Get down to four and you will be rewarded. Just keep running, keep flying high. And the energy from end line to end line, VCU. Van. Ooh. VCU has made eight straight field goals now. This is their largest lead as KO misses the front end. Got to tell you, though, that's unnecessary. Isaac Van, you know, you've got a get great player, Jacob Gillier, who's playing his heart out. He gets in his face there. That should have yeah. been a technical on Van. That's unnecessary. I'm sure Mike Rhodes will call him out on that tomorrow. Van's played a really nice game, but that's twice now he's talked some smack once to the Richmond bench and that time to Gilliard. That's got to stop. That's not winning basketball. Isaac Van, the transfer from Maine. Junior out of Bridgeport, Connecticut. Jenkins. Lost the handle. Ojik will get it to Gustafson. The freshman, he can't handle it. And VCU just never takes its foot off the gas. That's what you have when you have that type of depth. You know, the, go in, play four or five minutes as hard as you can on both ends, and then you're coming out, someone's going to come in and do the same thing. And, we said it earlier, death by a thousand paper cuts, and that's what they do. And they just wear you out slowly but surely. They have these spurts of just great defense where they just get easy baskets because they keep coming at you with the waves. Now, Gilliard, with his third three, he's three of seven from out there. He's got 14. There hasn't been enough of that kind of sharp shooting for Richmond here tonight. They started extremely cold from three. One for their first eight. 
VCU leading 73 to 54. They're 335 away from their 18th win of the year. Beautiful night for VCU in front of the home crowd. 61% from the field, 50% from three. Everything going the Rams' way, Tim. Well, they played a complete game, there's no doubt about it. You know, they had a few periods where they took some possessions off on defense and played a little soft at the beginning of both halves. But other than that, there's not much to complain about if you're Mike Rhodes. This team shares the basketball. They get up and pressure you. They get up in your face in the half court, make you feel uncomfortable. They rebound the ball, and then they move it up the court fast and they go to the rim, and tonight they made shots from the outside, and when they do that, they're almost unbeatable in this building. Yeah, if that three-point shoot, shooting can continue throughout the rest of the regular season and through the postseason, this will be a tough out. BCU projected as an 11 seed right now by Joe Lenardi. He's got him as one of his last four buys. There was more to lose here tonight for VCU than to gain, no doubt about it, but they came out from the get-go and really put their foot down on Richmond. Well, Mike Rose did a good job of scheduling this year. His quality win at Texas obviously sticks out, but they played UVA on the road. They played them to a tough game, and then they lost by eight. They, they beat a good Temple team. They, they lost in overtime to a really good St. John's team, and all that will help them, you know, quality opponents. The bad losses you see to Charleston, which is not a terrible loss. Charleston's a very good team, and they're going to have the rematch here against Rhode Island coming up. They've still got to go to Richmond, which that won't be easy. No. You can see Richmond will be feisty, and, and they've got to go to George Mason. George Mason is a very, a very, very good team this year. The Siegel Center is a tough place for opponents to win. So it's the Robin Center where Richmond calls home. Nathan Kao's been in around the basket a lot tonight. He's got 16 points. He'll go back to the line. Half of his points have come from there tonight. So here's the schedule for VCU coming up. They're going to be at Dayton on Saturday. Then three straight here at home again, too. Well, the Dayton game, obviously, is one of the tougher venues in the Atlantic 10 to play in. And they've had an outstanding season. They're 8-3 in the league. It's Davidson, VCU, Dayton, George Mason, and Duquesne. Any of those teams, as we said earlier, if they won in Brooklyn, you wouldn't be surprised. So right now, I think you're looking at VCU as a team that should get in the tournament. If, if it were selected today, I, I really believe they would be in, and Davidson would be right there on the bubble. But down the stretch, both have a lot of work to do. any let up this team is getting better as the season progresses so I, I believe VC will get there because they're not going to hiccup going down the stretch 10 national tournaments in the last 15 years for the Rams that's why it was weird for them to be home last year Isaac Van with his third three What a night for Isaac Van. And he's only a 30% three-point shooter, but he's feeling it tonight as well. And Golden able to score on the baseline. There is no quit in this Richmond team, and they've taken a lot of punches right to the chest. And body blows tonight, but they keep coming at you. They've got a lot of character. Gustafson defending in the corner. 12 seconds on the shot clock, 2.02 to go. VCU going to go to 18 and 6, 9 and 2 in the A10, and will be the first place tie with Davidson atop the league. Richmond's going to drop to 4 and 8 in the Atlantic 10. And Van is fouled, and that's going to be number 5 on Grant Golden, I think. Nope, they gave it to Wojcik. That's his third. So Golden will stay in the game. Not sure where the foul was there. 
Morrissey was just trying to back up, and Van created the contact off the bounce. But 22 point game, you got to make sure you call them tight right to the end. That's what Chris Morrissey said. Just kind of put his hands in the air and said, Enough. A good thing for Chris and his spiders there in the long trip home. Six mile bus ride back to campus. Back to the foul line is Keyshawn Curry, who's in the game now for Mike Rhodes, commits the foul. He's number 11, freshman out of Fort Union Military. So he's the 12th Ram to get into the game here tonight. Gustafson at the line. Tonight on Sports Center with Stan and Neal following Warriors, Blazers, and after the buzzer. The Timberwolves to his 30-point scoring streak and questions for the Red Sox as they begin their World Series title defense at Sports Center at 1 a.m. There's always questions if you're a Red Sox fan. They're never happy. <laughs> it's true. Who's going to be that fifth inning relief pitcher? This coming from a Yankees fan. I have to throw that out there. Easy. I've got to go home eventually. <laughs> You got a lot of Red Sox fans in your house. Under a minute and a half to go, Sims. Step back, long two doesn't go. Wow, Williams attacks and his clobber. Going to the rim. Gustafson leveled Williams and it looks like both are gonna be okay. Well again, Richmond playing right to the final buzzer, not giving up a lay easy layup. And this is a character play, a little bit too physical. Probably earlier in the game, this would have been reviewed and been, most likely would have been a flagrant one. The officials picking and choosing how to interpret the rules tonight. You know, you were coaching for a lot of years and you know, people watching this VCU team, they see 12 guys get in the game, they go, well, you know, everybody's got 12 guys on the roster. How come more teams don't play that? It, Having guys and having guys who can play well like VCU and having quality depth, two different things. Right, there's not a big separation between the, the top five and the next seven. And, and there is some separation, but if you're going to have depth and use it, you've got to try to use it properly, meaning not, not only the numbers, but the style that you play. And that's what Mike Rhodes has done. And they're not full out, all four, 40 minutes of end to end pressure. He picks his spots. and. They do it for three or four minutes at a time just to try to wear you out through the course of the game. But one thing they do do constantly is when that ball crosses the midcourt, they are up in you and they are denying up the line and they really rotate quickly. And they do a great job of combining pressure but also giving great help. And then uh, we talked about earlier helping the helper. So when the help rotates over, someone's helping the man that's helping on the inside. Tries to flush it, and he'll go back to the line as Gilmore whacks him over the shoulder. But the VCU bench has outscored the Richmond bench tonight, 28 to 1. You kind of knew that stat would be there coming in, just the way they played all season long. And there's no let up on both teams. The, the 1980s NBA no layup rules in effect tonight. <laughs> no one's getting an easy look right to the end of this one. The other thing I like about this place and this building tonight and this fan base during our first game here ever is that it's not the old up 20 with a minute to go. Everybody leave. Leaving to beat yes. the traffic. They're still here. They're, They're still enjoying here. every moment. And that's, that's a credit. That's a real great fan base right there. Staying to salute this team after a tremendous effort for 40 minutes. They're going to stay here for 40 minutes. <laughs> 33 seconds to go. And VCU 
is going to be in a first place tie with Davidson in the A-10. The game at Dayton on Saturday. And three straight home games back here at the Siegel Center coming up following that one. Richmond will go back to the line with under 20 seconds to go. And VCU, they put up 85 on the road against St. Bonnie on Saturday. And they put up 81 here at home against Richmond. They may not be done. And this is a team that we talk about their defense, we talk about their depth. Sometimes they've struggled to score. But lately it seems like Mike Rhodes' team is figuring that out too. Well, in the second half they didn't get too three-point happy after the great first half, six for 12. They just went back to their normal game where they pounded it inside, they got to the free throw line, they got out in transition. And listen, they're ever improving. You got Williams, the freshman, Corey Douglas, the sophomore, Marcus Santa Silver is only a sophomore, just really rounding into shape as a big time player. Van with the transfer year. And he is a good player, and Evans is still recovering from the Achilles problems. But this team, I think, is a dangerous, dangerous team going to March. Convincing win in the Capital City Classic. The Rams of VCU over Richmond, 81 to 60. Back to wrap it up after this quick break. Hiring was always a huge challenge. Endless hours on job sites with not a lot to show. Fans a big factor here at the Siegel Center again as VCU wins at home 81-60 over Crosstown rival Richmond. The 130th consecutive sellout going back to 2011. The Rams got the fans involved, Tim Welsh, early, and they stayed involved. This is a tough place to win. I don't care if you're coming from across town or from across the country. You come in here and get a win, that's saying something, but Richmond didn't have it tonight. You better buckle up your bootstraps because the energy is here in the building, but the energy is on defense, and that's where it yep. starts and ends for VCU. And tonight they combined it with some unbelievable three-point shooting. And when that happens, I don't know who comes in here and beats this yep. team because they're gaining confidence by the game with their offense. Their defense has always been there. The numbers are so solid, but they wear you out with depth, and tonight they wore you out from three-point line. Richmond had a very good game plan. They're going to play a soft zone. They're going to help out. They're going to take away the drives. They're going to take away the lane, take away the free throws. But VCU made them pay early and often. Just spaced the floor and shot the ball with tremendous confidence. Made 10 for the night. They only make about six and a half per game. But tonight they were feeling it. And then they combined it with their ever always smothering defense. Tonight's 81-60 to win, the ninth of the year in conference play for the Rams, so they're now in a first place tie with Davidson. The Rams have seven regular season games to play. Four of them are going to be here at the Siegel Center, so that bodes well for the Rams down the stretch. Well, everyone says this league is down. I don't buy it, though. The top part of this league is very, very good, and I think any of these teams can win the Atlantic 10 tournament, and I definitely think Davidson can get in as an at-large as well, and Duquesne, Mason, Dayton. Even St. Louis could win the tournament in Brooklyn. There you see Joe Lenardi's projection. It could change a little bit after tonight, but the Rams an 11 seed. Last four buys. We'll see what happens down the stretch. 81-60, to 60, the final in the rivalry game. For Tim Welsh, I'm Clay Matvick. College basketball continues. Vanderbilt and Florida coming up next. So long from Richmond.